guys and welcome back to another episode of M Creator. So today what we're going to be going over is how to set up the machines for Forge Energy and then what we're going to be doing uh, next couple episodes, I would say the next three episodes, is taking a little bit of a break so I can actually work on the fluid script and we're going to be covering uh, three things the community wanted so we'll be focusing on that after this um, this week. So. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is actually import some of the textures. So I'm going to go ahead and go and import some block textures from the workspace that I have. I'll be updating these later for the workspace so it matches the theme and everything. But um, right now I need to go to mCreator and I'm going to go into the folder that I had um, all the textures in. And then I'm going to grab the drill textures. So I'm going to import all these. And then we can go ahead and start setting up the block. So what we need to do is we'll go into our forge folder. And I'm just going to create a new folder here called um, machines. Uh, we could even call it uh, drill because that's what it will be. And then we can start making our blocks and our procedures. So we're going to need one called um, drill and I don't think there's really any other thing that we need other than uh, this particular thing. If you're going to add like a, a drill on me mechanic and drill off mechanic then you might want to specify on and off uh, but for now we'll just be using this. So let's go ahead and set up the texture for the sides. Uh, we're going to want the texture for the sides here. We'll set the um, input for the front here and then we'll set our texture down at the bottom and our texture at the top for our basically our export like where we'll be dropping the items and then what we can do is we can set up the properties so we'll probably want it as iron I uh, might want to set something like five and six for the hardness and resistance. I uh, will make sure that it's under the right tab. And then we'll go ahead and select uh, metal for the sound. And we can set our pickaxe to something like uh, two for iron for being able to remove it. Um, if you have an on and off state, you probably want to make sure that you have your off state drop for this particular one and your creative tab for your off state as well. All right, so all these other settings look great to me, so I'm going to move on and we're going to want to set this to a one tick delay or we could go ahead and we could uh, do a 10 tick delay depending on how you want to um, set up your procedure. Um, if you want it to run a little bit slower, you can actually delay this and it will delay the amount of energy that it's going to take at a certain period. So you can kind of cap how much times it will basically run rather than just going on a one tick delay. So I'm going to actually just leave it at 10. This will be half a second. So every half a second, it will basically go ahead and try to do that. So um, other things that we might want to do is make sure we have something set up on the color map, so for the map color, and we might also want to make sure that the block will be blocked when it's being pushed by a piston, and that entities see it as a blocked um, actual block, so they don't actually try to pathfind through it. Other than that, all the other settings look perfectly fine. We're going to need to enable MBT. So basically a tile entity and then what we're going to need to do is set our um, size to zero because we're going to be hooking this up to the cables as well. And then what we need to do is just uncheck those two boxes. Once we've done that, we can move on to enabling Forge Energy. You can set the maximum energy to something that you want to store in your block. Um, for example, we might want, want to set this to 256. If I can find 56, there we go. And that will allow it to have a storage of 256 uh, locally uh, for the block itself. Uh, generally, you want them to have a little bit more than what the block is going to be using. So, um, for example, I'll be using 8 energy for every time it runs. So, I want to make sure that it has, you know, at least some storage in there. 
Uh, for this, you want to set the property same as your cables for your energy receive and energy extract. So maximum is 64 and minimum or receive is min 64 as well. All right, so we're going to need two particular triggers. We're going to get that in just a second. I'm going to save the mod element and then reopen it just so the procedures actually generate after this particular block. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just set up a drill update tick and we'll get to that in just a second. I'm going to save it and we're going to need one for block added as well. So we're going to set up this procedure and save that and then we can go ahead and make sure that these two things are linked up and then we can go ahead and save it. So once we've done that, uh, let's start with the adding mechanics. So I'm going to scroll down on the other window that I have up here just so I can see what I've done for the other procedure. So basically what we're going to need to do is if it's north and stuff like that, we're going to need to make sure that the direction for the cable is actually set up. So what we need to do for that is we're going to make an if statement and then we're going to test for else if, else if, and else if. And one other thing that I forgot to do was set up the rotation. So we want it on Y axis um, rotation southwest northeast. So we want that one right there and it should be on player side. So we're going to save that. Just make sure that's all set up. Okay, so once we've done that, we can go ahead and set our condition. For this particular block, we're going to get the direction of the block under block prop procedures and then data. We're going to get the block, get block direction of block provided block state. And then we can go to Minecraft components and grab a directional block. We're going to set this to north and then we're going to try east and then south. So these are the directions the block should be facing. So this will vary depending on the player's ro rotation, right? So we're going to make sure that depending on the rotation of the block being placed by the player, we're going to make sure that we can set the, the variables for our cables. So in this case, uh, we want cables and we're going to go with F copper and then we would want um, East. Uh, for that one right up here and then we're going to do North for this one. and south. Now you don't need to specify the other directions. By default, they'll be false. Uh, south. And then our last variable will be west. So depending on your material, uh, we've covered all this before in the previous videos. So this is basically the size of the actual uh, energy output. This is the material, this is optional, but um, if you want to add a material, then you can add it. And then the direction is what direction we want. Now there is one more thing that we need for this particular procedure, and that is another block variable. We need to set the mining level. Uh, so mine level, and we're going to go ahead and set this to Y minus one. So it's directly underneath the block when we place it. And that will allow us to get everything ready for the update tech procedure. So let's go ahead and save that. And then we can work on the update tech procedure, which is a little bit more complicated, but not too complicated. So first thing that we need to test for is we're going to make sure that there is an F statement and we have an AND statement or AND operator. So we can test for two things. Uh, then we're going to need a not block. And then we're going to go ahead and grab under word, world procedures data and then scroll down to pro is provided with client side. So we're going to make sure that it's running on server side because it's not going to be client side. And then what we want to do is we want to get the energy of the current block. So we're going to go is equal to or greater than and then we need our energy. So we're going to go to block procedures, energy and fluid, and then we're going to get the uh, get energy of current block. And we're going to put that down right like that. And then we're going to test for the amount that we want the block to use. So in this case, I'm going to set it to eight because it's going to use eight energy each time this block is going to be used. So once we've done that, what we can do is we can create a couple local variables 
and I'm going to call this one mine level. And we're going to need this to be set to a number variable. And the other one what we're going to need to do is mine pause. So mine pause. And then this will be for a block state, which is going to get the block at the mine position. So once we've done that, we can go ahead and set those variables. So we need the um, variable for the block state. And we're going to need the one for the actual um, mine position as well. So with mine position, what we're going to do is go to data and scroll all the way down until we get to get block, get NBT number tag of block. And then what we're going to do is basically set this to our mine level. So this is going to set the variable of mine level to the current mine level of the block. That will make a little more sense in a little bit. Uh, then what we need to do is we need to go ahead and set the position of the block for the block state. Then we're going to go ahead and set the mine level variable for that for the y ac for the uh, y axis. So it's going to basically get the mine level that we just set, and then we're going to basically apply that to the block state. So once we've done that, we can move on to the next thing, and that is making sure that we have drill, uh, a tag for drill um, breakable blocks and stuff like that. So what we're doing with this one is we're going to go to our data for our block procedures, and then we're gonna scroll down a little bit until we get a tag. And then we're going to get that block state. So um, block procedures, and then we're gonna place our block state there. And we're gonna need a not statement for this because we don't want it to break certain blocks. And we're gonna go and put this under our own namespace. So tail of biomes. And then what I'm gonna do is uh, drill um, blocked. And that will allow us to basically um, make sure that we can assign blocks that it can't go through in this particular procedure. So the next thing that we need to do is actually extract the energy. So we're gonna go up to uh, energy and fluid and we're going to extract our eight energy that we basically just set up here for the eight energy. We don't need it to be any location other than the current one and the same direction is gonna be the same because we're extracting it from the current block for the drill. Uh, the next thing that we need to do is we're going to go ahead and remove that block that we just uh, tested for our block state. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and remove block and we're going to go with with break particles. And then we're going to set the location for that for our mine level. So like this. Next, what we need to do is we need to spawn that item uh, that we just broke. So we're going to go to world actions uh, spawn dropped item and we're going to go ahead and set this as a convert to block so this one right here and what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get our mine position uh, block state so we can basically set it up like that and then what we want to do is we want to set the coordinates for these particular ones. So what we want to do is go ahead and grab a math operator and a number block. And we're going to set our first two to 0 0.25. Oh, pardon me, 0.5. And then what we want is another one that is going to set it to 1 point or 1.5. And that will allow us to spawn it just above the block uh, location. So it'll be like this. So X, Y, and then Z. And we're going to make sure that this is all set up like this. And you can enable or disable these depending on what you want. I'm going to leave it because we want to basically pick up delay and we want it to despawn over time just so it doesn't lag the entire game. Uh, next, what we want to do is we want to go to our actions and then play a sound. So play sound and then the sound there. And then what we're going to do is we're going to get that same position uh, for X and Z. And then what we're going to do is get the position of the uh, Y coordinates. But this one is going to be from our mind level. 
and this way we can basically play sound at the mine level of where this block is mined. Uh, so um, we're going to actually set this to uh, metal and we're going to set it to metal break. So this you can set it to whatever sound you want, but I'm going to make sure that it's on the block uh, sound setting. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set the Y position for this particular one as well. So we can set the Y position to 0 0.5. So it's in the center of the block on the top where the drill is. So this is for the drill and that is for the mine location where it's going to be mining the block from. The only thing that we have left to do is basically set the um, variable for mine level. And what we need to do is we need to go ahead and subtract this by one. So the next uh, cycle, when it goes to the next part for resetting the thing, it will basically go ahead and set the Y level to one block below the, um, the actual uh, location that it just mined. So what we need to do is just get the mine level that we saved and put it like that and then everything else is set up. So it'll basically decrease the level each time it mines from this block right here and then it'll be ready for the test for the next one and then it'll just go and do this every time like every half a second. So that's the update procedure and then we can basically save that and we need to make our tag. So uh, I need to go in there and just check what the tag was I forgot <laughs> okay so tail biomes drill blocked so we're going to create our tag um, tail of biomes and then we're going to just paste that in clean this up a little bit and we're going to go and set this to a block tag so we'll go ahead and save that and then we'll put this under our mod namespace and then what we can do is we can clean up the registry a little bit so we're going to just clean all that up remove that part and do a slash to make the folder so it's under blocked and then what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set uh, bedrock as one of these particular um, things that it can't break so we want to find bedrock and uh, some other things that we probably want to make sure that it can't break is uh, some of the important things like um, for example the probably don't want to break the spawner but it doesn't really matter too much because you can break those in real life like in the game so that's fine um, command blocks those are things that you don't want to actually break and let's see here uh, the structure blocks those as well barriers and I think that's about it don't think there's anything else here that needs to be worried about yeah it looks fine okay so we'll just select those ones so we should have our bedrock uh, barrier block our command blocks and our structure voids and jigsaw block down here so our structure blocks are those ones and then our jigsaw block so once we've saved that uh, we want to make sure this is under the blocks thing I have to redo it because I forgot to set that so we're going to do that one more time um, make sure that it's uh, bedrock just have to find it again bedrock so hard to find uh, bedrock and then we need our Command blocks and our barrier block and our other blocks up here. So these ones, perfect. All right, so you should be under your block tag for the block tag type and then you're good to go. So save that and then we are all set up. This is already ready. So we can go ahead and save that and test in game. All right, so we're in game now and I've just moved a little bit over here so we're not in such a uh, region with a lot of caves. There probably still is a lot of caves but should be good enough to test. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our blocks tab in our mod. We're going to grab a solar panel, probably don't need a battery at the moment, and our cables. So we can go ahead and 
just set this up so we get a little bit of energy to our block. So we want to make sure that our block is like that with our connection. And then we can go ahead and put the thing on. And as you can see, it will start mining out the uh, blocks here. And if we go ahead and mine down, you can see basically what it's doing is it's mining out the blocks below every level and it's spawning them above the block. So basically right here. So that allows us to mine all the way down to bedrock. And if it comes across one of those things in the tag, um, either bedrock, barriers, structure blocks, or jigsaw blocks, or command blocks, then it will basically go ahead and um, halt the production so it doesn't go and do any particular uh, mining there. So it'll keep doing that until it reaches the um, lowest level point and or basically when it reaches a block that it can't do a uh, break which is in this case going to be bedrock and um, that's basically it. So that's the tutorial. Uh, as you can see this is all working. We got probably a tons of energy in this block. We can go ahead and do uh, slash data get and then block and we have 256 in storage right now so if you can see the energy storage that basically means how much energy is stored in it so we have the full capacity of it so right now it probably went past the um either in a cave or something like that you can go down and check might have even hit bedrock yeah it's hit bedrock so it hasn't mined out the bedrock that's why it basically stopped um, mining there. It can go through liquids as well, so it can mine directly through liquid and stuff. So basically that's how it's set up. Hopefully that this was an informative video for you. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.